my poor Romeo <laughs> is soaking in the rain and people say that Romeo can't handle the wet wrong they love the rain and in fact this one needs a little bit more fertilizer because I haven't fertilized this ones in three years I look like spaghetti western film with my <laughs> sombrero. <laughs> Is this actually a Mexican sombrero? Because it's quite wide and I put some plastic over it because over the years it has worn out and it's got lots of holes. Very, very good for summer. Hang on. I can't see my face. There you go. And there you go. So it's been forecast. Oh, okay. Can you see me? I look very... Uh, <laughs> Stunning <laughs> with my sombrero, but anywho, anywho, I'm not saying anywho. These two now, I had this on my last uh, video, vlog number 142, it was inside. So I took it out here now to let it have a little bit more sun. So this is exposing it slowly. So if I put this out straight away into the open area where it used, or actually in my 50% UV shade cloth area, put it straight away there, that will actually get burned. So I have to leave it here for a week in my messy dumping station. A lot of people have, they say, you're not attending to your plans. You should give it to me. <laughs> I will look after them. No, it's just impossible. It's literally impossible for me to work in the garden because I am between medical appointments and also rain. Yesterday we didn't have any rain. It was a little bit of drizzle which I can put up with during the day on and off. So I've been in and out working but we had um, appointments yesterday and that's cool. Just look at that. And then anyway, oh I can't move it too close. You're gonna get wet. My camera is gonna get wet. Okay. Uh, I should really get a cover for my camera, ain't I? So, as a quick remedy, look what I got. I got a piece of foam that an elastic rubber band. I can put it over. Look, hello. But I just have to make sure we don't cover the lens. So now, my camera's protected. I have to amend that and make that better. More permanent, maybe, when it's raining. But for now, I am going to go walk in the rain. And hopefully my legs doesn't get wet. And that's a Romeo Ruben hybrid of some sort or a Ruben hybrid. But anyway, hang on. That plant was given to me with no name. So gorgeous. So Lena Lee, thank you for that. And also I'm just looking at my Mundas. That's a Mundas. Someone says, no, it's not. It's a champagne and my arms is outstretched and shaking. So that is a baby from my Mundas and the siblings. That's one of the pups that came out of a leaf grown from a Mundas leaf. And that's the sisters and brothers. And that looks like a cream tea <laughs> with succulents. This is what I'm finding now over six years of growing them and putting them through the experimentations i call it torture that i've been putting them through i have found that plants will adapt they will change they will not stay the way they are and i have a strawberry ice that i was growing so this is a shichikuksi that i showed on my last video and i have strawberry ice so when you buy a plant, sometimes I will show you a good example of my lavender pebbles that are grown into seeds. I should go back inside later on and show you that. But anyway, plants will change, especially succulents. They will change. They will evolve. And my lilacina, okay, that lilacina there has been in that pot. I haven't changed that. It died already a couple of times and it came back so I just want to see how long that's Echeveria, not Lilacina, Linzayana, oh my goodness so I got Lilacina on the brain so that's I intentionally left that in that pot to see how long it will survive although I have a Linzayana somewhere that sort of died on me so I don't even know if it's still alive because it just put out some pups and uh, that one is a Linsayana Branti eye over there at the back. Plants will evolve and they will change. 
Now this Echeveria Parpasarum, this is the original Parpasarum, which is colored up. And for years, for about a couple of years, I have kept it under protected over on that side there. That spot, that exact spot where it's empty now. And recently, after experiencing a lot of frosts, I put it out, the two of them together, with the white parpasarum, which is the Korean form, that one there. And this is now the standard parpasarum. So I look at the two of them, and they're just gorgeous. Beautiful, but anywho, I bought another one. They are slow growing. Okay, I'll compare it with, still in the box. <laughs> so now, this plant is Armageddon plant. I'm actually thinking of getting a lot more of this plant because although it's a slow grower and it would not grow from a leaf. I tried so many times the white one and also this one growing from a leaf and I wasn't successful. So I'm thinking of getting some and that just beheading them. That way I can have pups. So this one is lined up for beheading. Maybe this one or either that one older plant depends how I feel at the time and what I'm thinking as to which one's gonna get a chop 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 now Lila Sina here is so gorgeous look at that so hang on <laughs> I got the cover hang on wait a minute <laughs> okay you can just because I'm holding this okay there you go so this Lila Sina excuse the white bit hang on because my camera's gonna get wet okay I'll move it back this is so hot okay so this Lila Sina has been sitting there for so long it's just so beautiful this is one of the babies of my mommy Lila Sina which is I think behind me oh actually I've taken it out they're already in the garden those three in a pot my original Lila Sina are gone gone baby gone and this is another one hang on yes that's also another Lila Sina that I put in here but see that one is more like a lilacina and this one is sort of have a squarish jawline <laughs> a square jawline see look it looks like a pollux so plants can change and this one is so pretty in it it's so gorgeous I have another one of this another baby that I grew and it looks like it's variegating so I gave it to my mother-in-law and she still has it she's still alive and she loves it so much so <laughs> anyway this rain oh my goodness the reason why I came out here and I forgot already is I was supposed to look for a spot for uh, I can't show you up there because that okay I, I just have a quick snap okay excuse that white bit because I'm trying to cover there you go okay that's plant hole. I'm going to do a plant hole uh, of that one. And that's the reason why I can't go in there because I've got them growing in there. And so I need to do the plant hole. And I can't do the plant hole if I haven't got the space because right now my bench is like full of uh, potting up stuff. And a lot of my plants now, they're still asleep, but they're going so pretty. So Vincent Cato hybrid here. Look at that. So beautiful. And also... and. I potted up some of the other plants before. I promised someone I'm going to show them what it looks like when they're potted up. Now, I potted them up together like this, mainly because of the reason. I don't know if I did uh, show a potting up of this one, but I put them together because that one is just going to overtake the whole lot of them. But that will provide um, comfort for the rest of the plants to say, you have to follow my example. You have to grow fast so that you won't get kicked out. So you'll have a space. Is that variegating? Look, my momok. My momok is like variegating. Okay, hopefully it will variegate or monstrous. Doesn't matter. I love monstrous. I love variegation. But most variegated plants doesn't really last very long with me. This one, I reckon that's a... <laughs> That's a freebie. I call it Lonely Planet because it's only alone, but it's so beautiful. That looks like a Hialina, also a Elegance hybrid. So maybe it is a strawberry ice. Who knows when it grows up, but it doesn't have a name. So I probably have to ask the person who gave me that. I have to ask Nora what that is. But anyway, uh, a lot of these plants, I haven't got a single dead plants from Nora yet but it's only uh, I don't know how long should I keep you because I got them mostly during winter 
And I was already expecting some casualties. Look at the Malgan Monstros. Oh, that is beautiful, beautiful plant. And also Shanghai lady is coloring up. So it's hard to choose, isn't it? This LP short pink, I'm also almost tempted to get more of this. Lavender Pebble short pink, so fat. And Bordeaux. Do we need more Bordeaux? For me, I don't need more Bordeaux because it looks so similar to Romeo, Romeo Rubin, the other hybrids. Uh, also, I got a few Rubens, so to me, I can pass it. Even there's Celestia. I haven't got Celestia, but I'm not going to get it anymore because it looks so similar. Dream Queen. I really love Dream Queen, so I went and got two more of you. But actually only one. Is it lovely Q? I can't remember now. I think I have two Dream Queen, but they're just green right now. It doesn't look like that. So hopefully it will grow like that. So a lot of the plants, you can say when you buy it, you have to pick the most colorful ones. Because I'm telling you now, if plants also has a preference, there's an ugly sister and a beautiful sister. And plants, even though they're grown at the same time, even coming from the same mother, when you they're grown chop, 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 or grown from a satellite pups, they do have their own look and their own personality, and they can change. And that rain star... It was green when I got this one, but I like the shape, but then now it's all red. And so hopefully this will all heartbeat. This heartbeat was supposed to go all red still, but, uh, oh, hang on. I get distracted. So many, so many things. Okay, let's move out of here. And my Velutina, my Astre, this is a long name. I can't remember. Astridia Velutina Varigata, this one. I was actually a bit... Uh, concern about this one I thought it's gonna die being out here in the frost and the cold because the normal one the ice plant that I have has survived the frost and the sun but they are summer growers and then I thought it should be asleep and when I got it it wasn't all that plump and fat but now look how fat and plump that is so I watered it of course and then left it inside for a few days acclimatized it slowly put it in my covered area and then now here it's still sort of under covered by this one but this does get a lot of cold air so anyway I'm gonna show you my other plants here at the moment I am fascinated with all this cuteness look at this cutie bean so I got this from Canberra swap I will write <laughs> the name down. So this every Monday and uh, auction is an auction. So I got that from Lindell. And also I got this pink granite from Lindell. Lindell. Okay, so go. I bought more plants from her last week or a few days ago. We're from last week's auction. And it is just beautiful. Her plants are gorgeous and she's very generous. And also that's the... Purple Dreams that I got from Let Love Grow. It's now enjoying the rain. And also this one, I got it from that Canberra swap. I think this is from someone else. This is Oviferum Aphrodite. Apple, sorry, apple. Apple. And also, I have, speaking of apple, I have this one, which is a Monstros one that I can't remember. I forgot to put the label on it, and then I took it out. And the label is sitting on my bench, and then I lost it now. And I don't know whether this is a an apple monstros, or it looks to me like a Pachyveria pachytoides, or Grapto python pachytoides. Who knows? I will have to find through my uh, file whether to see if I bought that from someone. But it's just... It's all monstro, see? Oh, so cute. That's a Vincent Cato. Well, I bought it and labeled as Vincent Cato, but I suspect it's a tissue culture. So maybe tissue culture of Vincent Cato grows really big compared to the other one. And this is a cutie bean. Cutie bean I got from Nora. It's so cute. Oh, so cute, so cute, so cute. Look at that. And my red velvet is already coloring up. And anywho, so there are, hang on. There's more. There's more. Yeah, the reason why, I forgot again, I just remembered why I'm here. <laughs> I, look, I've been busy. I've been very, very, very busy. Look at that. More plants that I just taken out. I haven't watered it and I just put it out here a couple of days ago. And 
Ah, uh, look. That is Polydonis TM. Star mark. Gorgeous. So many plants. Red soul. So, anyway, I now have a whole carnival of colors. So, which means I am already planning to stop buying succulents. Just the odd one here or two or 10 or 50 there. <laughs> no, I am. I really am. I really have to slow down and look at the uh, Rusbi. Rusbi, according to my research, doesn't like the sun. So I need to grow that because I have my Rusbi growing one teeny weeny Rusbi that died on me. And well, it did grow and then it died. And you know, I just kept neglecting it, but never mind. So i am decided I have to grow them and then I will, because it's flowering, I really want to get hold of some seeds and see if I can grow some more of that from seeds. If I have the time to grow anything from seeds. Oh, hello! You are popping out babies. Okay, this colorata is so gorgeous. And even the baby is beautiful. So this one, look at that. It's been hammered by the rain and powdery mildew you have signs of powdery mildew which reminds me now oh you've got a strand of hair did you know that if i have one tiny teeny weeny strand of hair on my back i'm like galloping and kicking like a horse i don't like it i'm very hypersensitive to even just one hair i don't know if any of you are also a sensitive sensitive new age gal like i am but speaking of powdery mildew so they do come back i spray this with my sulfur and it recovered because it was down in the bottom somewhere up the top actually but inside there so i took it out here well, i sprayed it with sulfur first put it down in the bottom there take it out after a week or two and put it out here and it got hit by the frost and you can see that still marks from the powdery mildew those spots there but it has recovered but instead it showed off all this beautiful gorgeous color it's just so beautiful so anyway let's go back to Ruben this Reuben, I've been spraying it. Well, first of all, it's been getting lots of powdery mildew. Okay, there's still another bit there showing there. So that white bit there, that's powdery mildew. And I would spray it with my methyl solution. And every couple of weeks, I would come and check it again and to see if there's any new growth. And usually it's between two to three weeks is when they come back again. Because we're still continuously, you can see that half of it is getting rained on and the other half is sort of dry. And the other half there is still got a tiny bit of powdery mildew. And so I've been spraying it in metho and it keeps them at bay. But recently I thought of, because I get insect bites or should I say mosquito mosquito bites all the time so I have a stop itch solution <laughs> that I use for myself and I thought and it's for burns and um, all sorts of ailments and then I thought I wonder if it will work <laughs> on succulents so I got some q-tips or cotton buds and I put a little bit and then I just rub against the surface of them so that's from the stop itch, the stop itch, the stop itch, you can see the mark. And then that one I missed because it's behind there. And I thought I'm not going to cover the whole lot. I leave it and see what happens. On that one, all the mild, uh, powdery mildew has disappeared. But there's new ones forming in there. So anyway, guys, so I don't know, maybe try it. See if it works for you too. But for me, I'm happy with the way it is. But then I have to let this dr dry up. Uh, maybe if we don't get sun, we're forecast tomorrow minus four with everything wet and minus four. And normally when they say minus four, it usually gets colder than that. So a lot of the plants will freeze up. But I am not concerned because whatever plants survive the frost for me are the plants that are going to grow in my garden. So anyway, guys, so let me know how you go with your stop itch, see if it works. And I think I better go inside and have another cuppa because I am getting cold. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye for now. This is... Okay, I better put the light down. Okay. This is my Graptopetalum lavender pebbles that are grown from seeds. And now this is grown under my grow light. My grow light. Hello, mama. That's my mom's 
photo over there. Hello. I always say hello to her and good night every day. But anyway, now you can see that. Okay, I'll pull back. This area here, I just all green. And some of them here and some of them there are all pink and chubby. And those marks there are from fungus nuts that's being attacked underneath but it doesn't worry me because because I like mutations and I want to see how they turn out and also I find plants that are attacked by fungus nuts uh, mealybug insects in general and if they survive it they tend to be immune to it and become stronger plants so that's why I'm trying to <laughs> I like the word t-o-r-t-u-r-e Yay! Rah, rah. <laughs> okay, sis Boomba. Now this one is from one leaf. Look how many. Can you see that? How many babies it's got? And you think I will forget. I did not forget. So there you go. Let's go back here. So there's all this every time. Hang on. Let's go back here. So sometimes that will happen. They lose their leaves and it drops. Some of them, some of them will dry up and others grow. So that one there grew. And there's others more in there. So look, this one as well. Look, it's just one plant, one leaf. It's like one leaf. There you go. One leaf and grown these two heads. So now if I chop, chop, chop again, because now this one's, if I'm going to chop here, chop there. And I think I don't know where my crested ones went. It got covered. So when you buy plants, always pick the most colorful ones because they will give you more color even though they say to you that oh eventually it will color up not the case there are some plants it's like the ugly sister and the beautiful sister succulents are the same thank you guys have a great day